This is an infrared video of Gerard's water snake. And this snake was captured in Singapore. And this species, Gerarda brevistoniana, is found in the mud flats in Singapore and all along the muddy coasts of Southeast Asia. Now Gerard's water snakes are fairly small and this particular individual has a body length of only about one foot or 31 centimeters. And for this snake we measured the maximal gape, that is how wide it can open its mouth around a cylindrical object. And for this individual it can only get its mouth around a nine millimeter cylinder. Now that anterior edge of the crab it's attempting to swallow is over twice that width, about 21 millimeters wide. And this snake uses an extraordinary behavior to swallow the body of this crab, which is larger than can be swallowed whole, as occurs for normal snake feeding. After grabbing that anterior margin of the carapace of the crab, the snake has a stereotyped behavior that involves in making a loop of its body that first goes over the neck of the snake and then the snake pulls its head and the prey item through that rather tight loop and by doing so it's able to hold on to the prey at the same time it tugs on it with its head and ultimately that's going to allow it to pull the crab into some smaller pieces that in fact are going to be small enough to swallow. So this clearly is not an accidental breakage of the crab, but rather the breakage and the snake taking bites as a result of a very deliberate behavior. Now you can see the snake is coming back to locate the remnants of the crab. Once again this is in total darkness and just being viewed with infrared, so smell is playing a key role in the snake being able to find the remaining a bit of food. This species of snake is closely related to another species in Southeast Asia that eats crabs, Fredonia leucobalia. They're found in the same habitats and even uh, in the same site. Now that other species that's a crab eater in the mangroves and on the mud flats will eat crabs that have their normal hard shell. And on occasion, that other species will snap the legs off of crabs. However, that other species of crab-eating snake does not tear the crabs apart to the extent that Gerarda prevestoniana does. So this is a really unique behavior, but there are some superficial similarities, as one might expect with a species that is evolutionarily a very close relative of this. By eating soft-shelled crabs, Gerarda enjoys many benefits that Fredonia does not have when it eats hard-shelled crabs. One of the simple things is that because of their soft exoskeleton, soft-shelled crabs are effectively helpless and can't fight back. And of course they have very strong claws that can hurt the snake. Now another thing is that in that soft, freshly molted condition, it becomes possible for the snake to actually rip the body apart where this simply can't be done in a hard-shelled crab, given the rather weak jaws that snakes have. And this allows Gerarda to eat crabs with a body size much larger than can be consumed whole by Fredonia. Now another benefit that Gerarda has by eating soft-shelled crabs is that it does not become a victim of the crab. Harold Voris has found that some of the larger crabs found on the mudflats can eat snakes. So if a species of snake that eats crabs does not properly identify a large crab as being freshly molted, the tables could be turned and the crab could attack and in some cases crabs will even kill snakes. So identifying before the attack whether the crab is defenseless and soft is a very important evolutionary innovation 
in order for this behavior to actually help the snakes rather than hinder them. Peter Ng at the National University of Singapore and at the Raffles Museum along with his students and the staff at those respective institutions were invaluable for locating these rarely observed animals as well as filling in us herpetologists more than a little on the wide variety of crabs that are found where these fascinating snakes are found.